So I've had about six people in here um, kind of just hanging out and it doesn't feel crowded, you know, because it's so wide and tall. It's a big space. So it really, it really feels comfortable and it feels more like a home, you know, or like a studio apartment than it does, you know, a cramped uh, van conversion. So Hey, what's going on guys? It's Nomad Brad here. And today I wanted to take you on a tour of my completed box truck, Abundant. Let's go check it out. All right guys, so here's a quick overview of the truck. It is a converted U-Haul. It's a 12 foot box. So the bottom part end to end is 12 feet with the attic on top that measures 14 feet. So some people will call this a 14 foot truck. Some people call it a 12. I call it a 12 foot box. So this is the rig that I've converted into my tiny home. Um, the first thing you'll notice is, um, I actually left the roll up door in place. So that's the original roll up door. And then what I did is I just, um, on the backside, I put up a plywood wall to connect all the paneling. I removed the roller piece from the top. So the door no longer moves. It's solid. And then I cut a hole in the middle and then put in a traditional entry door. And so I uh, also cut in a window. So I've, I watched a few videos before I started, you know, some people, they remove the roll up door and then they frame in a new wall, but I was in a time crunch and I wanted to save money. So I thought, why not just use the existing uh, roll up door and it's worked out great. And then one other thing I did, as you can see, I put this trim around it, around the edges and then trim where the door gaps are. So that kind of just finishes it out, I think nicely and just makes it look a little bit less like a roll up door. Um, the other thing you'll notice is I built a little table out here. And so I initially purchased that to hold the generator, although I decided I don't need the generator. So now it's just a nice little outdoor uh, desk that I use uh, to hold stuff when I'm outside, put my dirty shoes on it, put a drink on it, whatever. And then I also have a, a vice clamp um, that I had in my shop before I left and I decided to bring it with me. So it's actually come quite in handy. Um, I've used it on a few projects. I've used it to hold some two by fours and um, some other stuff while I'm working and building on the road. So vice in the back has definitely been handy and let's go inside. All right, guys. So here we go. I'm gonna leave the door open, see if we can get a little more light in here. All right. So I wanna just give you guys kind of a quick overview just let you see the space, see what's going on. Um, I definitely wanted a kind of a minimalist design. I wanted everything to be clean and simple and bright. And I didn't want to feel like I'm living in a, you know, in a tunnel or in a cave. Uh, I wanted to keep it open. So, you know, I, I, I sacrificed like a lot of places where there could be storage, depending on your build. If you wanted, you could put cabinets and stuff up above. But for me, I just love this layout. And so the first thing we'll notice as we come in, um, is the walls. And so this is uh, MDF paneling. I purchased it from Lowe's. It is, uh, it comes in four by eight sheets. And so it looks, if you look close, it's textured and it almost looks like flooring, right? Like flooring that I used on the wall, but it's actually just quarter, uh, quarter inch thick paneling. So it's nice. I put um, one inch uh, styrofoam insulation on the inside and then a sheet of half inch plywood. And then I put this four by eight sheets across it. And then that allows me to screw everything in, uh, screw in the picture frames, things like that. Um, this is kind of my desk space where I do my work. This is, uh, this is a bed bench. So it actually pulls together into a full size bed. Um, I'll show you guys really quick. Um, I really love photography. And one of my favorite parts of van life has been being able to photograph my journey. And so starting at the beginning, this was my first van, my blue van. Uh, we called her Vangelina. <laughs> so that was my first build. And then uh, my second build was this shuttle bus, second build for myself. And then the third build for myself, which is what I'm living in now, is my box truck abundant. So it's been quite the journey. This is uh, about four years of van life that I've kind of compiled into that floating picture frame. And uh, I actually really like it, really like the picture frame. Um, and then the ceiling also has the one inch insulation. And then on top of it, it has this uh, Wayne Scotting panel board. And uh, you know, you'll find it at Home Depot and Lowe's. It's just a uh, simple quarter inch thick, uh, again, like an MDF style. And then I mounted it to the ceiling and then I used these uh, one by fours where the seams are at. So these are all four by eight sheets. And then I put the one by fours up to cover the seams. 
and it's been holding up really well. I like the light, bright, white uh, space. It feels big and it feels bright in here. So um, love the ceiling, love the walls. The floor is just sheet vinyl. Uh, so it's not insulated, which again, I was kind of in a rush and I just rolled out vinyl flooring. Um, if I was building again, I would insulate it because the floor does get really cold. Um, but that's just something I didn't do. So the floor is not insulated. I do have a diesel heater. Um, the remote for it is right here and the diesel heater works fantastic. The outlet for the heater is right here. So this is the 5kW heater and it cranks out the heat. It's way more heat than I need in here. So it does a great job of maintaining a comfortable temperature. Um, coming over at my desk, this is a Husky uh, sit stand desk from Home Depot. I love it. Uh, I had a one that I kind of built out from scratch before, but when I saw this at Home Depot, I was like, I just want this. It's easy. It's very well built. Uh, it's a solid steel construction, and then it has a nice wood top. And so I have this computer chair because I do a lot of computer work, video editing. And so this is kind of my workstation where I get to hang out. Uh, I get to talk to my crystals <laughs> and uh, just kind of have a nice little Zen space. Um, something else I'll mention is if you see this diamond plate metal piece on the bottom, that is um, that is three foot by eight foot, no, by 12 foot sheets of uh, aluminum diamond plate. So I got that from a local steel mill and I put that up on the bottom. I kind of wanted to have like an industrial modern look and I wanted something that would be really uh, sturdy and wouldn't get damaged easily. So that is actual aluminum diamond plate. I think it looks really cool. It's unique. It's different. And, uh, and I love it. So um, that's what you're seeing back there is the diamond plate, the desk, it's got two big drawers. So I keep all my, you know, all that stuff that you don't know what to do with pens and Bluetooth speakers and batteries. And here's some JB Weld um, notepad. So I kind of keep, here's my hotspot, keep stuff in here. And then I got another drawer down below. Look at that, the wealth mindset, let's get it. And um, so that's pretty nice. Love the computer chair, it's super comfy. Um, I have an instant pot that I keep down there. And then uh, what do I got? A jug of water, some potatoes. I kind of just keep extra items down under the desk. There's plenty of space down there. Um, because this was a box truck, it came without windows. So I added windows. Um, I wanted to kind of maintain a stealth look from the outside. So I just put in one small window here, one here, and then one in the back. Um, so when I'm moving around inside, you know, people can't really see in. And also the windows are so high off the ground that even people that are walking by, if they're looking in, you know, they're seeing up at an angle, but they can't really see what's inside the rig. So even just for security and safety, you know, people can't walk up and just peek inside at what's going on. So um, I did cut in a couple different windows there. Those are the tough grade windows I got on Amazon. They were cheap. They were like 60, 70 bucks a piece. And they work out pretty good. They have a screen uh, with them. And, and uh, yeah, I've been really happy with them so far. And then moving on to the front, this is kind of the kitchen and storage area. And so, um, yeah, really happy with it. This over here is just extra storage. Show you guys, we'll open this up. And so I have all my electrical down here. Um, I got a juicer. I got some extra, just like some rice. That's my sink drain inverter in the back. I've had, I've, this is my, actually my fifth build. I built three rigs for myself and two for friends. And I've always ended up putting my electrical near my water. And a lot of people comment and say it's, you know, fire waiting to happen, but it's been four years. I've never had an issue. So uh, yes, I do have my electrical near my water, but that's a consequence I'm willing to live with. I've never had an issue. Um, I got all my wiring in the back. Uh, safety cutoff switches, fuses up top there. So everything's got its place. The batteries are underneath. I built a little shelf, but underneath the shelf, I have two 200 amp hour Renogy AGM batteries. Um, so 400 amp hours, but because they're AGM, I can use about half of that. So I have about 200 usable amp hours. Um, a battery, it works out great, pretty much. As long as I get sun, um, I can really only go probably a day and a half without having sun to recharge them. So <clears throat> you got to kind of chase the sun with that setup, but it works out pretty well. Uh, the countertops, this is a live edge. It's pretty popular. I'm sure you've seen it in many other builds, um, but this is a live edge slab. I got this when I was up in Oregon. So I went to a sawmill and I picked out the slab. I sanded it, epoxied it, 
and uh, I love the way it turned out. It's super durable, it's really pretty, and it cleans easily. It's really smooth and soft. Um, so I'm really happy with the, with the prep space. I do a lot of cooking, and so I wanted to have a lot of room to work, right? So I have not only the cutting board that can be a prep space, I got the countertops here and here. And then the other part that I did was uh, this fridge down here. So the fridge slides out sideways. And so when I slide that fridge out, then I also have an additional workspace. I'll show you guys how that works. Okay, so here's the latch. Pull that out and then the fridge just slides this way like that, right? And it's 12 volt, uh, it's a 12 volt winter fridge. And I've used this in my last two van builds. It's a great fridge, I love it. It's dependable, I've never had issues. And it's built really sturdy. Like the, fr the outside is a nice metal, um, you know, the latch, it's like a heavy duty plastic. It's got this stainless latch. All the hardware is really good quality. So when I was shopping for fridges on Amazon, um, some of the complaints were, you know, the hinges were breaking, the latch was breaking on a lot of the cheaper fridges. This one, I think, was about 400 bucks, somewhere in there. And there's a lot of cheaper ones that have popped up on Amazon in the last couple of years that you can get for like 300 And it just seems like they're built really cheaply in the sense that it's it's worth your money to spend 100 or 200 more and get something that's a really solid piece. And if you think about it, too... You know, when you're out boondocking out in the desert, out in the mountains, you want to depend on your fridge. You know, you don't want to have one that breaks down. And I mean, yeah, it might have a warranty, but when you're out in the desert, what good is a warranty? You know, you got to take the fridge apart and mail it in. That's no good. So I think it's important to just buy a quality fridge from the beginning. I like these ones because they have these baskets that pull out. So you can just open the fridge, pull the basket out, close the fridge, keep it cool. And then you can, when you're cooking or whatever, you can just work with what you have here. Um, and so it's really convenient. And then it's easy to clean also. So everything kind of just wipes out when you have the baskets out. So these winter fridges, I love them. I'll always use them um, in my builds if I can. So that's the fridge. I'm really happy with it. I like this, the side slide. Um, in a lot of the builds, you'll see the, sli the fridge slide out the front. But the challenge is... You can't have you have to move from your workspace to have the fridge out so with this one i can have the fridge to the side and then the top of the fridge is another workspace you can cut on it do whatever you want so in theory you have you know eight almost eight feet of countertop space to do your work so i think it's a really slick layout i really appreciate it a lot um on the side of this cabinet i cut a little access just so i can reach in and grab things that i need um from the side and then under this cabinet on the side here i have some storage and then underneath i have this is lucy's stuff her water bowl her food bowl her extra food in the back so this is kind of where she eats and drinks right in the corner there it's nice and tucked out of the way um i have outlets right here i have uh you know double outlets and then over here i have a single and I did the outlets that have the USB charging capabilities. So you can get those like at Home Depot, wherever. But that way, you know, you can plug in an Instant Pot or a blender. And then you can also charge your cell phone or your iPad, whatever you have. And then same story over here. I got the USB charger. So those are both running off my 2000 watt Renogy inverter. So I have a total of uh, one, two, three, four, six 110 volt plugs, which is nice. And four USBs. Um, that are right there and then also i ran another um power line under my desk to a surge protector so all my computer stuff can plug in here so i have power at the desk and then i have power at the kitchen station so plenty of outlet options so that's worked out really nice on the upper side here i built these little um shelves kind of for my regular use items i got vitamins i got some um supplements this is like a spirulina powder i put in my smoothies i got this is some irish or a french sea salt this is turmeric so i kind of keep all my cooking stuff here and then also up here same story some hot sauce some teas uh that type of thing so it's kind of nice to have just quick access stuff and it doesn't fall out all the bumps and and jumps that i drive um never had anything fall out so that's nice 
up top on the u-hauls they have this piece called the grandma's attic which is nice you know it's it's about 30 inches deep 30 inches tall so it's quite a bit of extra space um some people put a bed up here but i um my concern was if i put a bed up here you know the mattress goes to here and then you can't really sit up in bed it's kind of tight and I like to sit up in bed and read and work on my laptop. So I decided to make this storage. So I divided it into three drawers and then I had extra room. So I have a little cubby on the side. So the cubby, I keep towels and um, paper towels and plastic bags and stuff here. And then these drawers just have a simple little quarter turn latch that I kind of just threw together at the last minute and it works. So I just left it. So that's how you can lock the drawers in place and then um, you just slide them out like this and you can see, you know, they're on drawer slides just from Home Depot. And then in there I have all my, all my goodies. This one's for food. You can see I got bananas, sunflower seeds, tomatoes, pistachios, all kinds of stuff in here. So this one is, is mainly food. And then this one, I'm not gonna open it up, but this one is all my like, like uh, uh, I got a bowl, I got a coffee maker, I got some food storage Tupperwares, um, some disposable plates or disposable bowls. So I got some kind of, uh, and then that bin in the back, I have all my cooking stuff, like my um, measuring cups and, you know, cheese grater and stuff like that all in the back. And then this side here, this is all kind of like dry goods. It's like, I got oats in here, Ziploc bags, I got some teas, some more salt, some supplements. So between these three storage drawers, it really covers all the kitchen items you need. And then up top, this is just one big storage tray. So this is nice because you can put long stuff up here. So I have like my double folding chair. I have camera tripods, uh, folding table, another folding chair. And then because my bed is not a, it's not always a bed, it folds up to a bench. So you need somewhere to put your bedding. So I sleep in a, I have a double sleeping bag. And then, uh, so when I'm not sleeping, I tuck it up there. I got some extra blankets and I got a pillow that goes up here. And then I got a couple backpacks and there's even more stuff st stashed back there. So it's really nice to have this big flat area to store stuff in. And I do have a step stool right here, a folding step stool that I can uh, set up that allows me to reach stuff all the way in the back. So. Um, I love that storage area. It's really worked out nicely. And then moving right along, um, I have this door. So the U-Hauls do not have an access from the box to the cab. So I had to add this. So what I actually did is I found this door at an RV salvage yard. And I don't even know what it's for, but it just happened to be the perfect dimensions. The universe definitely hooked me up. And so what I did is I bought this door. I traced a template. And then I just drilled the hole in the corner and I got a really long Sawzall blade, like the longest one I could get at Home Depot. And I literally just cut, cut around the template. And if you get, the trick is if you get one long Sawzall blade, you can cut both, you can cut both openings at the same time. Cause if you just trace this and cut it and then try to trace the other part, there's a pretty good chance that the hole will not be the exact same opening. It'll be a little different and you really want both openings to be the same exact size. So the key is cut both pieces at once. I'll show you what that looks like. So this goes up into the cab. Uh, you can see up here, I got Lucy's bed in the middle. That's where she rides when we're driving. Um, I got some gas for my diesel heater, some oil. I got some other just random truck parts there. And I have the diesel heater um, right here behind the passenger seat. So I got the fuel tank up top, the diesel heater here. And the reason I did that is because the diesel heater, it does make a little noise while it's running. The fuel pump makes kind of a ticking sound. And so I wanted to try to have it be as quiet as possible. And so that's why I mounted the heater up there. And then the hose comes through the wall and pops out right there. So diesel heater behind the passenger seat. And then you can see this is the opening. Um, so this is basically right here. This is the end of the box. And then there's like a two inch gap in between. And then this is the cab section. So with that one Sawzall blade, you can cut through and you can cut both openings at the same time, which makes it really nice. And so if I come in and turn it around, you can see, um, where I cut it. And then it has a little piece there. And this piece is called accordion boot. 
So this was the hardest part. It took me a long time to figure out how I was going to make this connection. And so this is a big flexible piece of rubber. Again, it's called accordion boot. And then it clips on to both sides of the opening. It just like it pushes in and it has a little metal like clips on the back so it stays in place. And then it allows the cab and the box to move separately because these two pieces are not physically attached. So when you're driving, especially off road, the, the, ca the cab will move independently from the box. So you need to have the flexibility um, where the two pieces can move independent, but you also wanna seal it you know, for road noise and to keep the temperatures the same. And uh, so that accordion boot worked out really nice. So I'm really happy with the, the cab access. Um, it's got a nice latch to it. And uh, it looks, you know, like a factory piece. So really happy with how that turned out. Um, and then moving on to the other side here. So I have a full length mirror, hey guys, <laughs> which I use for, you know, getting dressed, whatever. It's nice to have a full length body mirror, make sure your pants aren't stained <laughs> when you've been out in the wilderness for too long. And then I have a little bench here. That's where I sit to like, you know, put on shoes or just do whatever I can sit there. And then I also have underneath, I have a bucket toilet and then I have like uh, toilet paper and, and a little broom down there. So this is just the um, five gallon bucket with the toilet seat on it. And so for emergencies, um, you know, you just unclip it, slide it out. And, um, you know, I've been van lifing for four years now and I rarely have to use that toilet. It just, you just learn as you're traveling, you learn to find toilets when you need them. They just kind of appear. Or if you're really out in nature, you know, you just dig a hole, that type of thing. So it's very rare that I actually use that toilet, but it is nice to have one because sometimes, you know, you just need it. So emergency toilet down there. Really happy about this piece. This is my closet. So I always wanted a place to hang up clothes and coats and things, and I, I never had one. So I built one in here. And so if we look inside of it, um, it's a little empty right now because I'm in Texas and it's hot. So I don't really have many hang up stuff. I got one light jacket, one kind of medium weight jacket and a raincoat, but uh, quite a bit more storage that I could hang clothes. And then I kind of just end up throwing stuff in here. I got a pair of shoes. I got a USB fan, headphones. So I kind of just end up throwing, you know, you guys know how it is. You just kind of throw stuff wherever it fits. Um, it's lined with quarter inch or eighth inch uh, cedar paneling. And so that's actual cedar. And then I put some oil on it to kind of season it. And, um, and so I, I like that cedar closet plenty of space to hang your big stuff and then it just latches right there and then I for all my regular um you know day-to-day -day items that I wear I decided to go with these bins um from Amazon so it's cool because it helps me stay organized and so like each bin is for a different purpose this one has socks in it um this one has underwear this one has shorts in it I got one for long pants, um, another one for pants and shorts combo, and then one for t-shirts. So it's kind of cool because you know exactly where everything's at, it's organized, and then um, you can pull the bins out, and then behind the bins, I have other stuff. So I have like a couple hooded sweatshirts down here, um, some, sweat, some sweatpants in the back. So it's, you know, it's not perfect, but it's a pretty good system. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and then, sorry guys, it's really bright. You can't really see this. Let me shut the door really quick. See if you can see that better. Oh, there we go. That's way better. Okay, so my storage bins. I got an extra shelf that's just kind of got some random intermixed items. And then the bottom one is all my is my shoes and sandals. Um, so yeah, I got a few pairs of shoes, slippers, some flip-flops, um, fly swatter, <laughs> which is important, right? A couple of pairs of shoes. So yeah, all my sh my um, footwear is down at the bottom. So again, everything's organized and simple and clean. Really happy with the closet. And then again, I finished it out with this same four by eight paneling. So what I really like is when you walk in, everything just feels congruent, right? All the wall pieces are similar. It feels kind of like one space. Everything's got the white trim on it. So um, I think it feels really good. And then the last thing I'll show you guys is my bed bench system and kind of how that works out and then here you can get kind of a shot of the rear entry door i put some big wide like five inch trim on it i thought it would be cool to do kind of an extreme um kind of an extreme style door trim i think it looks pretty good so 
Um, you can see up top, this is where the roller for the door originally was. So the big spring for the roll up door. And then the track, the track for the door is behind that white board. So um, I left the track in place. Like I said, I left the door in place. I just put plywood over the door and then I put um, this paneling over the plywood. So closed that in, made it a permanent wall. But now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys how the bed bench works. All right, so one of the important things for me um, in designing a convertible bed bench is I wanted it to be simple and fast because the last thing you wanna do is every day have this added task you have to do, especially twice a day, you know, setting up a bed, breaking down a bed. If it takes too long, it's just gonna be frustrating and you're not gonna wanna do it. And I knew I would end up leaving it in the bed configuration and then it, it'd be hard to get out the door. So I made it as quick and easy as I can. So let me show you guys how it works. <laughs> All right, so we just slide this one, slide that one forward. That piece drops down. Slide this one forward. Those pieces go over. So that's the bed configuration. And um, this right here, this is actually um, a, a full size memory foam mattress that I just cut into quarters. So it's, um, it's comfortable, it feels just like, you know, it's the same mattress I used in my previous build, my shuttle bus. Uh, it's been comfortable. And so I just cut it into quarters, that way it's a seat or a bed, and then the sleeping bag just lays on top. So in the morning, I just roll up the sleeping bag, throw it up top, and then push the cushions back and I'm done. And then I'll show you guys while I have it out. Um, underneath it's a slat style bed so underneath the bed i have storage so i have a bunch of tools down there i have some extra rice um so i'm taking advantage of that space as a place to store stuff and so you can access it from here right so you can reach in from here or from outside you can reach in with the door open and grab stuff there and then it's the same story on this side i got a bunch of power tools down there so i'm able to access those items when i need it and I'll give you a peek um, of what it looks like. It's you, You've seen these before online. It's just your standard kind of slat-based um, sliding bed system. So works out pretty well. And then I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the reverse, which is the uh, putting it back into bench configuration. All right, so that, <clears throat> excuse me. So there we are back into bench configuration. Um, I don't know if you guys timed me, but I assume, you know, it takes about a minute to just put everything back. So it's very simple. And uh, I've been in this van for over a year now, and I have not, I haven't really got tired or irritated with having to do this setup every day. So it seems to work out pretty nice for what I wanted to do. And uh, the cool thing is now it's a great spot to hang out. You know, I can sit, I can sit here. I can have friends here. We can kind of hang out. I also have, uh, you know, you can kick your legs out, sit sideways. So it's comfortable. So you got seating here and there. And then the computer chair friend can sit there. Another friend can sit on the bench up there. So I've had about six people in here, um, kind of just hanging out and it doesn't feel crowded, you know, because it's so wide and tall, it's a big space. So it really, it really feels comfortable and it feels more like a home you know, we're like a studio apartment than it does, you know, a cramped uh, van conversion. So that's about it, guys. I just wanted to give you a tour, show you how it, 
how it's been functional for me. I really like it. I definitely recommend this configuration. You know, if it looks like something you'd be interested in, I'd say go for it. Um, the only other thing I'll mention you can't see that I didn't really talk about is I have, um, on this side, I have a 27 gallon gray water tank and that's, uh, just for the sink. So that lasts like forever. And then on this side, I have a 30 gallon freshwater tank. Um, so I, I put one tank on each side to distribute the weight evenly and the water tank lasts me a long time. Also, um, I'll show you really quick the sink. So the sink, I like this one a lot. It's a Rivati. Uh, bought it off Amazon. And then this faucet, it's called a, like a drinking fountain faucet. I like it because it's flexible. So you can like move it around and clean out, you know, dishes. But then also um, it uses a very minimal amount of water. So this sink comes with this drying rack, which is pretty cool because you can put your, you know, your utensils when you're done with them. You can put them in there to drip dry. And then it also has a, a little rack in the bottom. So I turn all my stuff upside down, let it dry out. And the sink is on a foot pump. The pump is right here. It's the baby whale foot pump. Uh, I like it. I like anything manual. So you don't have to rely on electricity or any kind of moving parts really. So you just pump it with your foot like that. And then water comes out and that's about it. The cool thing about this faucet is it's a small stream, but it's powerful. So you can like, you know, you can kind of blast dishes. It'll blast off food particles but it doesn't waste a lot of water. So uh, it's a really cool sink. I like it a lot. I definitely recommend it. All right, guys. So that about wraps up the tour of my tiny house, Abundant. I appreciate you guys checking it out. Um, I'm sure I left out some stuff. I've given quite a few tours over the past, um, over the past year. And it seems like every time somebody asks me a different question or there's something I forgot to mention. So please, if you have any questions or comments, um, please leave a comment in the, please leave a comment in the comments. Just let me know. And I do read every comment and I reply to them. I'm happy to give you guys links, um, whatever you need. And the one thing I will tell you too, this van, it's a 2006 Ford E450 Econoline. I bought it in Oregon about a year and a half ago. Um, prices were good. I got it for 5,500 bucks. It had 120,000 miles, which I realized nowadays it's like almost three times that price to get a similar vehicle. And then the conversion, because I did it myself, I really only have probably about four, maybe $4,000 in parts and materials. So I put this whole thing together for like around 10 grand, which is pretty crazy. You know, if you guys can do the work yourself, um, it's definitely a good value. And then I will also mention on the roof, I have two 300 watt solar panels. So 600 watts of solar. And, um, and that's going down to my Rena G 40 amp charge controller. And I also have a max fan on the roof. So, but as you can see, it looks pretty stealthy. Um, honestly, in all my travels, most people think that this is a business. They'll ask me, oh, what's abundant? What's your business? Like, what do you do? So it's good to get the feedback just from the general public that their first thought is not I'm living in it. They think it's just some kind of business vehicle. So it's definitely been very stealthy. I've camped a lot of places without any hassles, without people getting in my business. So it's been an enjoyable rig. And I hope you guys have a great time on your own conversion. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it.